I am using all six of these journals in some way for 2024. Let's have a chat about each one and I'll let you know how it fits into my life. Hi, it's Erin. Thanks for clicking on my video. I hope you like notebooks as much as me because that's what we're talking about today. I was thinking about the order I was going to present these journals to you in and I thought about doing maybe like the one I'll use the most to the one I'll use the least, but I don't really know. I can't predict that. So I think we're just going to go with the obvious and then fly by the seat of my pants, I guess. This is the Mellow Days watercolor paper journal in A5 in the sage green colorway. This is my own personal bullet journal part one for 2024. I can usually fit half a year pretty comfortably in uh, any kind of A5 journal. And I've already started setting this one up. I have the plan with me video for this one on my channel. Here's a link in case you want to see. I've actually never used a journal like this with the watercolor paper. It's textured. It's a learning curve for me. I am going to try and challenge myself to use paint at least for the first six months of this year while I'm setting up in my bullet journal. So that's where little Miss Reverie comes in. Right now there's only that one setup. I will be setting up for January pretty soon as well. I do usually have a few pages left over at the end of my journal, but I use them to swatch things and test out layouts before I commit to them. And I usually go through and pencil everything out and have that little swatching experience with my channel members as well in a private live stream that is just for hand lettered heroes level channel members. So I do end up using those last few pages at the end for that purpose. And here's an example of that when I was testing out how this layout was gonna go just to make sure that stamps over gouache paint worked the way I envisioned. And it did, which is great. Thanks channel members for helping me out with that one. My bullet journals typically start from January and run to June and then from July through to December in the second one for the year. That's just pure luck. When I first started bullet journaling, I did from September 2017 through to the end of 2017 and then the entirety of 2018 in my very first Loish Term 1917 journal. And after that is when I just was like, well, I finished the last journal. I might as well start a new one for January. And I have just kind of lucked into that. If I still had a lot of pages left, I would not be starting a new journal for next year, but I lucked out that way. And I do like having a fresh journal for the new year. So that's the bullet journal. Let's put her over here. She has a sister, a, a big sister, you might say. Also from Mellow Days, this is the Magnolia sketchbook. A little bit different to Reverie over here because this one has a thicker page. I don't remember exactly. I'm gonna say 200 GSM, I think. I'll double check that and put it on the screen in case I'm incorrect. This is not for journaling purposes. This is for practicing painting, probably. I haven't written my name in it yet, but I did take one Skillshare class that was a, a painting thing. And I did also test out stuff to go in here in this one as well. My plan is to try and challenge myself and do something arty every week. That's it so far, that's all that's in here. Like, look at all these blank pages. There's a lot of potential there, but also a big undertaking, not something that I've ever done before. I wanna challenge myself maybe like one tutorial a week and just have this be a progress visual art diary kind of situation. And also testing things out in this journal in a way that has no consequences before I try them in here in a way that has some consequences because I do publish my plan with me videos. So of course I want them to be kind of good. Magnolia here is a little intimidating, but I'm excited to see how much I can improve in a year. So I'm going to pop her under Reverie just so that this is structurally sound over here. I'm including this little cutie because I am setting it up even though I'm not actually going to be the one using this journal. This is the giveaway journal. This one's from Scribbles That Matter. It is their Lavender Colorway Pro A5 journal. This is the one that I'm currently running a competition for on my channel. It is a fully set up. I don't wanna show you too much of the inside because it's kind of a, still a surprise at the time I'm filming this. You won't have seen all of the stuff inside either just yet, but you have seen this layout if you've been hanging out on my channel and you can see it up here if you wanna see what's going on here and potentially enter the competition to potentially win this journal for your very own. I am setting up a full six months in this journal for someone to have as their very own bullet journal to love and use and ignore if they want to. It's up to you. It's up to you what you do with it, if you win. At the moment, at the time I'm filming this, I have set up, uh, maybe I'll just show you the cover page for each one, hey? A Little bit of a teaser. So that's the cover page for 2024. Here's the cover for January. This is the cover for February. Here we have March. Then we've got April and I haven't yet got to May and June. We do still have some setting up to do in this one, but I'm very happy with how it's coming together. I thought I would include it in the video, even though I won't be using it because it is technically a journal that I've spent a lot of time in recently and I'm excited about it. And I wanted to make sure that you know about it too. Look at this, look at how chubby she is already. It's 
gonna be so much fun. I hope whoever ends up with this journal loves it and uses it. I really hope that they use it. We got another big boy. This one is gonna be my reading journal. I have not started on her yet. This one is another B5 journal. This one is from Archer and Olive and it came with their Charming Picnic subscription box back in, when was that? March, 2023? I have not made a single mark in this book yet, although I will be setting it up really soon. Look at all that fresh. Look at how much bigger the page is than in A5 journal. So much potential. Once again, it's kind of just convenient that I'm starting a new reading journal for a new year. I originally, again, started my reading journal in 2022 in September, and I've managed to fit that September through to the end of 2022 and the entirety of 2023 in that reading journal. It is packed. It, I'm pretty sure it has just enough pages left for the rest of December. So once again, it feels good to start a new journal for 2024, but I would not be starting a new one if I had pages left in the previous. And who knows, given how much bigger these pages are, how long it might take me to get through this one. Who knows how long I could be using this journal for? We'll have to wait and see and find out together. Things I love about this journal, the embroidery. Oh, are you serious? I actually don't love the color of the cover, but I did really want to challenge myself to try a B5 journal. I think it will suit me better for reading journaling than it would for my own bullet journal over here. So this is my, my gateway into B5 journaling. Yes, Magnolia over here is technically also a B5 journal, but she's not She's not a journal journal, you know, she's a visual art diary more than she's a, a journal with dot grid pages or lined pages or anything else. So not really counting her as a journal, she's an art book. Ladybugs can go over here on the pile with the rest of the journals we've already talked about. We've got two left to discuss. This one here is from Kuma Stationery and Crafts. This is their Moonlit Potions A5 journal. Very, very cute. I love the cover, the linen, uh, the details everywhere are really sweet on this one. This is the journal where I do all of my example layouts. I do all of my swatching of new washi tapes. I do all of my testing of things. Our charming Jess of Jashi Korean calls her version of this her research and development journal and I feel like that's the best name for it. So I'm gonna steal that. Thanks Jess for your genius. This is where I swatch things. If I'm doing like a you know, this was like a dashboard spread example, weekly dashboard thing that I did for a video that goes in here. Swatching things for haul videos. This is stuff from the washi tape shop that goes in here. Anything that isn't planning for myself that has to go in a journal somewhere goes in this book. So all of this kind of stuff, if you're ever wondering like, where did all of those go? They went in this, this is research and development. I have not used all of this journal. Look at that, look at, it's probably like, what, halfway in? Maybe not quite yet, halfway. Plenty of pages still to go here, so I am continuing this one on. I started the year of 2023 with another research and development journal that I finished. So I think I started this one off probably about March-ish, maybe? Can't remember exactly, but it's not done, so. I'm not starting a new one until it is. Put her on the pile. And then there is one more journal left to talk about. And funnily enough, if there was a least used journal out of this stack, this would probably be it, even more so than the art journal. And I still don't know how much I'm gonna use that one. I love this book. It's from the Quirky Cup Collective. It is their Made of Stars journal. It is spectacular. I've had it for, look how like still pristine it looks. It doesn't look like I've had it for very long at all but I've had this since 2022. I started using this. Now I need to be careful here because this is quite personal. <laughs> Let me just flip to like how much of the journal I have actually used. I've only used that much of her. This journal I intended to use with the purpose of writing down my thoughts and feelings. And I just don't do that as often as I would like to. It's one of those things that I set out to do and then I don't. A couple of things I've found about the Quirky Cup Collective journals, they are, really, really worth it for the cover. Honestly, there's, they're just, there's so much impact. They're beautiful. Using it makes you feel like a wonderful witchy person, but they don't lay flat quite the way that some other journals do. They don't not lay flat, but they you got to fight with them a little bit more. The dot grid spacing is a little bit bigger than five millimeters, like not by much, just a touch bigger than five millimeters, maybe six millimeters. And the dots themselves, even though they're pale, they're quite large. So, it wouldn't be my favorite way to bullet journal. I prefer a smaller dot, a five millimeter dot grid, and also a a couple of other things like, you know, ribbon bookmarks. It doesn't have uh, 
pouch in the back it doesn't have so it is missing a couple of the things that I do look for in a bullet journal but as far as writing down your thoughts and feelings absolutely fine and I did start out decorating pages in this journal before I filled them in just with like a tiny little bit of sticker and washi tape action to make it more fun for myself and that did help but I'm not using it every day and clearly there is plenty of page still to be used in here so I'm not starting a new one for that either until this journal is finished. Hopefully now it makes a little bit more sense why I would want to use six journals for a single year. That does sound excessive. Obviously this one does not remain in my possession very soon. I'm announcing the winner on the 25th of November so very soon after that I'm planning to have it shipped off to its winner so they can have it in time for next year, you know, so that they aren't waiting for it to arrive and not able to plan things while they're waiting. So for a little bit of a recap, this one you're going to see every month until June. This one you're going to see every month until June. This one you're going to see every month until I use it up. This one you'll see sometimes. I'm not sure yet how much I'll show you inside of this one, depends on how confident I'm feeling. This one I will never show you inside of, I'm sorry. You don't get to see my deepest, darkest, innermost thoughts and feelings. But I will happily show you the cover anytime you like. Let's have a chat about using multiple journals in a year. Do you stick to just one? No hate here. I stuck to just one for many, many years. Honestly, the fact that I make stationary content on the internet is the only reason I am able to do this many journals in a year. It is not probably reasonable for the lifestyle that I had three years ago, but for where I am right now, I can do it and it's practical, so why not give it a go, right? Let me know which of these journals you think is the prettiest. I'm very curious because we all have very different tastes. So let me know which one you think is the nicest in the comments down below. There are links to all of these in the description as well in case you would like to get your hands on any of them for yourself. Some of them do come in different colorways. I'm not sure I can link to this guy because it came with a subscription box, but I'll see what I can do and maybe find you the closest one and link to that instead. Thanks for talking about notebooks with me. I really enjoyed spending this time with you. If you'd like to spend some more time with me, the link on the top right here is to a video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy from me. And underneath that, there is a playlist of every bullet journal theme that I did for the entirety of 2023. So enjoy. Catch you again soon. Bye.